The cool thing about an Alaska sawmill is that you can take it into the forest and cut boards where you can't get heavy equipment in to haul out logs. By taking the mill over the creek here, I'm able to mill some cottonwood into 10-foot boards for shelves above our shower enclosure. I attach this 2 by 8 by 12 to the top of this log with screws and shimmed up places where the weight of the saw might cause my guide rail there to dip or sag. I'm running a still MS-460 that I've had for about 12 years. Still runs like a champ. I've had this mill that long as well. I've got a 30 inch bar on it so I can cut up to about 28 inch log sections with this. Once I have that first slab off, then I have a flat reference surface and I can drop the height of the Alaska mill down to an inch and a half. And I'm going to pull three boards off of this log and configure those into a U-shape. There we have our three boards cut, inch and a half thick. And now I can just carry these out and get them on the sawhorses and do the rest of the work. There's no way I would have been able to carry that whole log out, but individual boards are no problem. The Alaska Mill's a little slow, but it sure gets the job done. Now that I have the slabs up on saw horses, we'll get to finishing them off. I'm gonna use this Makita electric hand planer. There are multiple ways to get a good flat surface on a mill board like this. The old way would be to use a scrub plane um, and just plane off so you get a smooth surface. The advantage of that is that then you don't need to sand. If you've got a good sharp plane and you get it all nice and smooth, you're ready to go. Another way would be to use a router and a flattening sled and just pull off that little bit that is rough on top. This approach I'm going to use, this plane, I'll take a few light passes and basically get the high points down and then I'll come back in with a belt sander and get them smoothed off. Then we'll go to a random orbital after we've made all of our cuts and get a, a super smooth finish on them. Then I'll finish them up with a little linseed oil and citrus solvent and that should be good. So I'll get to work. three passes at 1 64th of an inch with the planer and then came through with the belt sander and basically took out any tool marks left by that and a few residual saw marks so up here I haven't sanded because this is going to be cut off here but you can see you know the depth is about 16th of an inch in the worst places but the result is a pretty flat board. Certainly good enough for this application. Probably even good enough for cabinetry. We have this naturally curved edge. It has a live edge on it. And this other fork we're going to remove. We're going to take the jigsaw and follow kind of a mirror arc to the other side. And then we'll be able to measure from this longest point that way to get the length of cut that we need. So that'll be our final measure cut. Now we 
I can measure from this longest point this way. What I need to do is make a cut at 39 inches from that long point. Now, when working with live edge material, you don't have any straight reference edges to determine perpendicularity to the board at large. So what we can do is we're nine inches here. So if we go at four and a half inches and then over here, just over nine, so four and a half strong, get those two marks, then we can use a straight edge to give us a center line, which we can then use as a reference with the framing square. I can then pull a perpendicular line to that, and then that will keep this shelf largely centered on top of the wall that is going on. After squaring off the two legs, I put the miter on both sides of the back section of the shelf so that I could then overlay it directly on top of the two legs, square up the corners, and then transfer the marks from these miters onto those leg pieces. Here we have it laid up. You can see where I clipped the corners of the legs. those two screws to anchor the corners. With everything mocked up, I can come in with a random orbital sander and get everything good and smooth and sand down those miters so that they're nice and flush. There we have it. All sanded. Ready for oil. The corners are just tacked. And then once we lift it into place, we'll secure it directly through the top into that stud wall. Though structurally useless, cottonwood is gorgeous. Look at this grain. Makes good floors. You certainly wouldn't want to use it for anything that's going to bear any weight. It likes to crack against the grain. For something like this, it's kind of hard to beat. Beautiful. I'll wrap these ends in lime plaster and bring it all the way up to the underside of the shelf. I trim the inside with some cedar and screw the shelf directly into the frame wall that the tile is hanging on. I was able to make sure the mutters were nice and tight that way. And there it is.